welcome to the 12th session of consumer behavior course and I Dr. Shravanti Mukherjee will be delivering the second session on theories of personality. In the earlier session we have talked about the individual theories of personality and in this session we are going to talk about the social theories of personality and here we will uh, talk about Freudian theory of personality and new Freudian theories of personality and in particular Brick Myers theory of personality. So, to begin with we we'll start with the Freudian theory of personality. Sigmund Freud a Vienna based neurologist has developed his psychoanalytic theory while working with the mental patients. He claimed that there are basically three components that elaboratively explain the human behavior and these three are eat, ego and super ego. So, as you can see in this diagram, it is an unconscious behavior whereas, ego is having ego flows through conscious, unconscious and preconscious behavior and we also have super ego which is again a very uh, conscious behavior. So, to go in details we talk about the stages of Freudian theory of personality that is first we talk about the it stage. It is the only component of personality that is present from birth. Now, what is that this aspect of personality is entirely unconscious and includes the uh, instinctive and primordial behavior of the customer like I am very hungry I want a fo I want food right now. So, I, I do not think that whether I should grab a food from somebody else who is eating or I should buy some from somewhere or how do I be but at, at the end of the day I want a food somehow I want some some food stuff somehow. So, this kind of behavior without giving a social consideration without giving a uh, moral consideration when I am just only thinking to satisfy my requirement it is a behavior which is childlike behavior. So, that is why we call that is eat Freud has mentioned it in this way. So, this eat is a source of all psychic energy and make it the primary constituent of personality. Some people feel hungry more, some people eat less food some people becomes more thirsty, some people uh, are guided by you know good dresses too much of colors. So, these are all like some 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 inner traits which is obviously comes by birth this is the innate characteristics of the customer. So, the it is driven by the pleasure principle which strives for immediate fulfillment of all desires wants and needs. If these needs are not satisfied immediately that results in the state of anxiety, tension and erratic behavior. For example, if you see the TV commercial of sneakers, sneakers is chocolate. So, a person it has been shown that a person three friends are moving in a car and when one friend is very hungry he, he is behaving like a heroine. So, which means he is very temperamental and um, he is misbehaving with I mean uh, he is very arrogant to his friends and then his friends realize that he is hungry. So, that is why he is behaving in that way. So, he, uh, Rocky has been given Snickers. So, he eats Snickers and he is back in his own. So, this is though it is shown in a funny mode, but it actually wanted to highlight that. If you not talk about the ego behavior, ego is that component of personality that is responsible for dealing with reality. Like every time when I am hungry I cannot snatch food from others and have. I should have some social consequence some way of having food. I may go to a shop pay and then buy some food of my choice and accordingly I consume it. So, that going to the shop paying money and buying the product is a kind of social uh, socially acceptable behavior. So, this, uh, this socially acceptable this particular term when I am including with it then it becomes ego. Ego is developed from it and it ensures that the impulses of it can be articulated in an approach that is acceptable to the real world that is what exactly I tell wrote. And the ego functions are conscious it could be consciously done it could be preconsciously done it could be even done unconsciously. I am not thinking that I am behaving in a socially acceptable way, but maybe from the childhood I know that uh, this is the way to behave and uh, 
like if I am feeling thirsty, I may go to a shop and buy a bottle of mineral water and consuming it and consume it. So, this is the way I have seen throughout. So, that is why I am behaving in this way. I am not consciously thinking that this is a socially acceptable behavior to go to the shop, pay the um, pay money and then get the bottle and then consume it. So, that is that is how I have not thought. As a practice, I have done that. So, unconsciously, I am actually behaving in a socially acceptable way. It could be consciously also, it could be consciously also. I, For example, I want um, to wear a very fluorescent color dress, but I know if I wear this and go to the college for, ex for uh, going to college or my office, maybe I may be uh, ridiculed by my colleagues or because that is not an acceptable uh, dress to go to the office. Usually, you should have a formal kind of dress, not you know uh, several colors and all the I mean too much of uh, this fluorescent things and go to the because social society is formed in I am saying I am not saying it is wrong or right, but it is how the society is perceiving my colleagues are perceiving my uh, friends are perceiving in the class. So, that is how I try to conform to the group norms. Okay. So, that is how whatever I want I try to see whether it could be actually uh, in the real situation I can behave in that way or not. It is acceptable by others or not. So, the example which we can say for ego is like Nike ads especially when uh, the Michael Jordan uh, failure advertisement or the Maria Sharapova's I feel pretty kind of commercial which show both you know kind of self esteem and determination. So, this kind of things are there in ego. Uh, then we come to the uh, super ego state. Super ego is like drive, driven by morality. So, therefore, the super ego is a facet is the facet of personality that holds all of our internalized moral standards, our ideals and that we obtain from both our genetic background that is from our parents and then our society. Uh, this is basically our conventional source of morality that we pay respect to the elders. So, because of that maybe in some families uh, the kids they are they do not consume cigarette or alcohol in front of the elderly people. So, therefore, they are going to a distant location to buy that and having it may be in a distant location, maybe in their offices or maybe in the friend's house or somewhere else. So, this particular even when I am consuming it in a socially acceptable way also I am going in a proper place where the consumption of alcohol is admitted maybe in a bar, but I am not consuming it at home just because you know that is my that is the way it is nothing right or wrong again, but this is my sense of morality which has been inbuilt in my family because all my you know father, grandfather, my uncles are behaving in this way. So, that is how maybe my behavior my sense of morality has been built up. So, therefore, this is the conventional sense actually the super ego provides a course of action for making judgment. Okay, and this matches you see in the childhood we do not have it we after the age of 5 usually this kind of sense of morality develops that we also need to help others or something like that. So, for example, uh, super ego's example could be like the body shops ad which shows that uh, we could use all natural products and in an environment friendly approach. So, that could be you know one uh, way of uh, thinking about it. Or maybe when we are thinking of the advertisement of some detergent, we starts with uh, the Swachh Bharat type of campaign and it is saying that children are engaged in the Swachh Bharat campaign and that is why they are cleaning the roads and all this and that is why they, their dresses get more dark and uh, to wash they need a particular detergent. This is a very this was a very popular TV commercial uh, and you know this this shows a kind of a sense of super ego the morality attached uh, to this particular commercial also the sellers. So, there are two parts of this super ego. One part is the ego ideal and this encompasses the norms and benchmarks to be in appropriate societal way. These behaviors are those that are acceptable by parental and other authority figures. What my father thinks right or wrong? Going to school every day is a right kind of behavior or wrong kind of behavior. Traveling by car uh, in 
to the, my school is the right behavior or I should go by a school bus. So, uh, there could be several uh, assumptions behind it anyway. So, compliance with these norms leads to feelings of self satisfaction, value and triumph. For example, I will not use my private car to drop my child to the school because uh, that you know uh, may create some kind of um, show of effect or demonstration effect in my child in front of his other friends who are not having such kind of expensive car. So, I may like uh, though I, uh, I will buy a car, but that may be for going to my office, but I do not want my child to use it for going to school. He or she may go with me for outing, but not for school. For school may be I prefer that my child should go by the school bus. So, this is you know the distinction of how to use the car for the child, for the family, for myself. Okay. So, this will be actually uh, this is a kind of value system which I am having this satisfies me also. So, this is called kind of an uh, ego ideal or the compliance to ego ideal. The other one is the conscience and that comprises information about behaviors that are considered as acceptable by elders and society. Any violations of this behavior I may think that you know um, as I have just said that consuming uh, alcohol in front of others is not good. Uh, wearing a particular kind of attire is not good in, in the society. So, I may think that people uh, this is a feeling of guilt which may come in me if I create any kind of violations to that I will in a uh, I will feel my conscience will not permit me to behave in that way. So, therefore, the super ego acts to perfect and civilize our behavior. It works to suppress all unacceptable urges of the eat and struggles to make the ego act upon idealistic standards rather than upon realistic principles. So, the super ego is present in a conscious, pre conscious and unconscious kind of behavior. Uh, sometimes it is too much conscious also. So, we have to see how to balance. So, we are, should we behave in the eat way or should we have too much of ego state or should we have uh, too much of morality. By being too much of moral also like um, to what extent should I be moral? It also has to be realistic. So, therefore, with many compete if we say what kind of interaction would be there in e ego and super ego with so many competing forces it is easy to see how conflict might arise between e ego and super ego. I am very hungry at this moment none of my friends are going to eat, but I know that yesterday maybe I have skipped my dinner and now it is almost lunch time I am feeling extremely hungry. So, that time my although I am in a group my social uh, norms or maybe my friends will expect that I will go. Uh, to lunch with them and that is a socially acceptable behavior, but in this case uh, it may be I am guided by my eat and I am just going out and having some food. Okay. So, here you know the, therefore, how do I balance it? When should I go more for eat? When should I go for ego and when uh, people post on super ego. So, that interaction that balance has to be there in an individual. So, Freud used the term ego strength to refer to the ego's ability to function in spite of this dwelling forces. There could be a force to be too much moral, there could be a force to be behaving in a eat way. So, the ego's uh, actual function is actually balance between all this. If I have a strong ego strength, I, I will actually be a very balanced person, I will behave in a balanced way in this society. A person with good ego strength is able to efficiently manage the pressures, while those too much with little or less ego strength become too troublesome. I feel uh, consumption of chewing gum in the classroom is not good, okay. but uh, I, I I, I, I feel that, but then my ego eat says that I will consume it right now. I am consuming it in the class, but at the same time I am feeling the guilt. So, that is how I can be, become much more uh, irritable or I may have some kind of anxiety that I am uh, consuming this chewing gum is the teacher looking at me or my friends looking at me. So, this kind of things you know will be uh, it will I uh, will be disturbed actually. So, according to Freud the key to the healthy personality is to create a balance between eat ego and super ego. If you remember the ad of Raymond's it always shows the image of a complete man and this complete man is complete by his family, by his accomplishment 
and by the way he behaves in the uh, society. So, uh, this complete man may be an image of we may consider is a person who, who has a strong ego strength and who balances his eat ego and super ego in a wonderful way. Now, Although Freudian theory is very popular, but there are new Freudian theories of personality, so which is after Freud and Freud's theory is like um, it is too much of inner, I mean he says that although the theory of uh, Freud that sheds light on customers personality traits to a large extent, but several colleagues of Freud and the post researchers are of opinion that personality is not only a function of instinct and individual trait. A Freudian theory focused on social, this new Freudian theory is actually focused more on the social relationship, the interaction with the society, interactive effect morely, mostly, the style of life, the feeling of inferiority and anxiety as important determinants of personality. The most talked about or most popular new Freudian theory are propounded by Stack Sullivan, Karen Horney and Carl Jung and also Rick Myers. So, we will just go through those like Sullivan said that individuals constantly attempt to develop significant relationship with others and try to reduce this uh, state of anxiety. Uh, you know this relationship part for example, if you now see the uh, recent ad of Snapdeal which is showing that you are sending gifts to the mother to uh, and your mother is very happy out of it. And even if you this kind of ad or even if you see the Google emotional ad when the granddaughter and the grandson is connecting two old men who were actually depart uh, one is in Pakistan, one is in India and they were departed by the during the partition. Uh, so, that you know that particular emotion or the social need that uh, is you know which has been shown in because it has been shown that Google online search platform helps to you know get this kind of emotional experience because that is how uh, the grandchildren has got connected. So, that they could connect their grandparents also. So, that is how is one part of the significant interpersonal relationships and nowadays most of the ads are coming in social media as well. So, which shows that in the interactive platform where individuals are interacting, discussing, sharing their opinions about different brands, uh, different uh, state, different types of uh, understanding about morality or several aspects of life. There if this kind of the, the ads are positioned, maybe customers will discuss about this ads more and they will get more involved with my products and my brands. So, that is an assumption. The other one is proposed by Horney that is a cat theory and cat theory means C for compliant, A for aggressive and D for detached. Compliance are those individuals who desire to be loved, wanted and appreciated. So, uh, they are found to be looking at the brands which the families uses. So, they do not want to stand out as such, they do not want to satisfy all the family members to their friends and all this. May, uh, so, again aggressive individuals, they are those, those who desire to excel, they want to win admiration, they want to get noticed and so they may prefer brands like Apple considering them to be superior in technology, elegant you know. So, those things and detached individuals, they actually desire you know the independence, self reliance, individualism and freedom for obligations and they do not care what society is thinking about them, they want to satisfy their uh, needs and wants. So, therefore, what they are doing is they try different brands to see which satisfy their need to the best extent. So, that is how IKEA if you see the one of the ads of IKEA, uh, IKEA has stated that uh, it invites to start something new by showing how an old man he is carrying his IKEA chair in everywhere, he, when he is in the morning walk he is carrying it, whenever he is seeing the sunset time, he is carrying it, he is going to some office, he is carrying his own chair and uh, he makes his own seat and a comfortable seat as such. So, therefore, he is a detached individual, he does not think what people is thinking about me, I am carrying a chair with me, but that is that satisfies him, gives him a pleasant experience, I mean that, that satisfies his need. So, therefore, he is ok with that kind of behavior in the society. And the other most uh, prominent one is the Jungian theory of personality. Carl Jung in 1971 has propounded it and it is a bipolar way of preference of general attitude 
and uh, it's a dichotomous way. There is no, uh, there is nothing like uh, either the person would be extroverted or the person has to be introverted. The scale uh, with 93 almost items was developed, which shows a kind of either the person is extroverted or is uh, introverted, sensing and intuition, thinking and feeling. You know, so this kind of things which has been uh, shown here. So now we will say that. Uh, the Isabel uh, Briggs Myers, he has added to this Jungian theory another bipolar dimension that is judging and perceiving relationship as a fourth dichotomy influencing the personality type and this was done in 1980. So, they have added a totally new dimension that is uh, known as judging versus perceiving. Now, what are these things? We see that the terms extrovert and extravert, it is sometimes spelled as pronounced as extrovert also, but Brigmeyer has said extrovert. So, I am using the term extrovert here. So, these are sometimes the uh, kind of uh, referred to as attitudes and this introvert is more interested in the inner world of ideas and extrovert prefers the outer world of people and things. Sensing and intuition are the perceiving functions. Chang called them the irrational functions as a technical term not a pejorative as a person does not necessarily have control over receiving data, but only how to process it once they have it. Sensing people tend to focus on the present and on concentrated information and on concrete information I am sorry uh, that came from the senses and sensing prefers to receive data primarily from the five senses and intuitives tend to focus on the future with a view for towards uh, patterns and possibilities. These people prefer to receive data from the subconscious or seeing relationship via insights. Now, coming to thinking and feeling, your thinking are the decision making or judging calculus functions and they both strive to make rational choices using data received from uh, several sources and then uh, uh, and when we talk about the, uh, and then what they do this thinking people, they tend to base their decisions uh, on the logic of true or false. Okay. And uh, or maybe if and then. And if we talk about the feeling kind of person, they are more or less better or worse, this kind of uh, way they try to evaluate things. And judging and perceiving, if you see this is again two different uh, dichotomies and judging, if you say there is a J type, they tend to uh, behave like a planned or organized approach of life and they prefers to have things very methodically and in a subtle way. While P types, these the perceived kind of uh, assumptions, they actually like to be flexible and spontaneous in different situations of life given the options are open. So, this is how these different dimensions has been talked about. So, if you make a permutation and combination of all these things, it gives to the uh, 16 different dimensions, because we have said like if you look at here, now E is the extrovert, S is the sensing, T is the thinking and J is the judging. Similarly, I is the intuiting or intuiting customer this is the sensing, this is thinking, this is judging. So, this is how the customer could be classified into 16 different types. Brigmeyer's though the validity of uh, this particular Brigmeyer scale of 93 items is sometimes a bit questioned in terms of reliability, but it is widely used and widely practiced. So, we have also uh, we should also be a uh, little bit understanding about these concepts. So, to be more detailed, when we talk about extraverting, what do we mean by extraverting? What are the characteristics? Now, by extraverting, the kind of characteristics we mean is initiating, expressive, gregarious, active, enthusiastic. Introverting, we mean like receiving, contained, intimate, reflecting, or quiet. Uh, sensing is like concrete, realistic, practical, experiential and traditional. Intuiting if you see that is abstract, imaginative, conceptual, theoretical, original. Thinking, logical, reasonable, questioning, 
critical and tough, feeling empathetic, compassionate, accommodative, then accepting and tender, judging, systematic, planful, early starting, scheduled and methodical, perceiving, casual, open-ended, open prompted, spontaneous and emergent. Now, the, this has been taken from the Development Edge Consulting Limited's one of the papers. Now, if I say, from the, if you go back here and see this particular thing, ESTJ, what does it mean? ESTJ means extroverting, sensing, thinking, judging. So, the person should have all these characteristics. He will be innovative. He will be uh, wanting to experiment with new products. He will be expressive. He want to tell about it. He, he clearly expresses his need. He is gregarious. He is actively searching information. He is enthusiastic about new products. But at the same time, he wants some realistic uh, information from the source and very concrete. He wants to be practically thinking about it. Then he wants to he wants to experiment. That is fine. But he is to some extent traditional also. So, to catch hold of this kind of customer, you have to have very, very realistic and then he is a thinking kind of customer also. So, therefore, you have to give them a reasonable details about the products, which will help them to think that the product is realistic and appropriate for their requirement. So, this person is also logical. He will question about different attributes, critical, tough. He is also systematic. Methodically, he will uh, think of you know whether this product will feel, fulfill all my requirements or not. Okay. So, thereafter, we see that systematic, planful, early starting, he is an innovator. So, early starting, he adopts the information first, but he is logical. He collects all the information methodically, methodically you know, uh, calculates that whether the product attributes fit to the need, whether the attributes of the product justifies the price of the product or not. So, all this and so now, therefore, if we talk about the, the what kind of person, how, how do we think of this kind of person? Godrej, they have recently launched a refrigerator which is known as Godrej Eon NXW and this particular uh, product's main USP is just the right temperature, that is the slogan which means they have pantry, they have fridge, they have chiller, they have turbo chill, holiday mode, they have child lock, they have air lock system. So, all these different uh, uh, attributes has been very novel and very innovative which has been added. Then it has a kind of uh, you can sometimes we use refrigerator rather than uh, freezer. So, that is why um, what happened uh, bottom mounted cabinet is also there where some products could be uh, kept for the purpose of uh, refrigeration, not maybe for as a freezer, but maybe for refrigeration. So that's why uh, we don't want it to be getting chilled, but we want it to be in a uh, reasonably low temperature. They have a digital touch control panel, so which is very uh, good thing. So these are some of the things you know which has been uh, incorporated there. Then the sliding. Um, then the sliding kind of uh, panels or the boxes which could be sh which could the shapes could be changed or the you know different for different kind of products even if you want to have fine five wine bottles you can keep five wine bottles that's how it has been shaped so it's a two cabinet refrigerator top cabinet uh, and the bottom mounting cabinet also is there so very novel product but the kind of feature is very very new uh, different new feature although it is basically on the same refrigeration principle, but then uh, several new features has been added to it very distinctive. So, the person who is expressive, who is initiative, gregarious, enthusiastic for the new product, but at the same time wants to experiment, but at the same time is very much a systematic, questionable, reasonable and practical, maybe judging all these attributes and even if you see the uh, website, product website, then also uh, the uh, the characteristics which is which is being especially the USP of the product which has been highlighted and clearly explained. Even the promotion if you look at the recent promotion of this that also very clearly focuses on the uh, all the attributes of it. It is around the 2 minutes commercial uh, in the website in the YouTube and where if interested people they can go to YouTube and view it. It is showing very detailed feature of the product. So, therefore, Carl Jung is different from Freud in terms of his assumption or uh, nature and purpose of the libido, Jung has said that the general source of psychic energy and motivating a range of behavior is the 
nature and purpose of the libido, whereas Freud said a source of psychic energy specific to sexual gratification could be the purpose of the libido. And then the nature of unconscious, he has said that it is a Jung has said that the storehouse of repressed memories specific to the individual and our ancestral past, whereas Freud only focused on the specific desires or repressed desires of the individual. Cause of behavior also Jung has said both future and past behavior, while Freud only considered the past behaviors that is also of the childhood. So, this second portion of the personality theories, we have covered uh, the theory of Freud, we have covered the theory of uh, neo uh, Freudian theories in which Stack Sullivan, we have talked about uh, Carl Jung, Rick Myers and also we have uh, talked about the theory of uh, Horney. So, this was in short about uh, this particular lecture. So, thank you and see you in the next lecture.